Lura maħna fil-program mwissa kif badni l-kom għanna mistiden kem xejn speċjal u kolla li xanna maħna membru tal-Parlament Ewropew tal-Lussemburgu propju għanna li maħna li li Frank Engel. Frank, good morning and we welcome you on our program. Good morning and thank you for having me. Is this your first time in Malta? No, right? No, I think we're in the double digit numbers already. Already? It's a pleasure having you having you here. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Frank, if, if we if we if we compare Luxembourg and Malta to two two small countries within within Europe and within the EU, what what's the, the role of, of a small country in, in, in this framework? How difficult how difficult it is, eh? It depends a bit on the circumstances, uh, and I'll confess that uh, some time ago it might have been easier than it is uh, than it is today. Mm. But that's also a matter of of numbers of members, not so much uh, not so much of size. But I know, uh, as far as we're concerned, that uh, there have been many occasions um, throughout history where we've been able to uh, to give impulses that uh, that many others did not give. Uh, above all, under very successful Luxembourgish presidencies. Um, and I uh, realize that what Dr. Gonzi now brought back from the MFF oh, negotiations yes. mm -hmm. is something that proves that if you have the negotiating stamina to, uh, to take it till the end, um, it is not your size that matters, it is, uh, it is your impact that matters. Mm -hmm. a, sound, a sound background, uh, background and a sound, a sound economic, economic uh, stability, how much it helps in all this? Um, it certainly helps if you're not bankrupt. Nor, nor, nor had it there, mm. and um, and that's and that's uh, to state in evidence. Huh? Um, but then again, a small country doesn't really have uh, doesn't really have three and a half options. If we let our public finances go uh, completely astray, uh, we don't have an economic hinterland to uh, to fall back on. Um, this is what uh, this is what the Germanys of this world can allow themselves for a while, uh, but small countries shouldn't. And um, as far as I'm aware, the small countries that we have. Uh, not only Luxembourg and Malta, but certainly also Luxembourg oh, yeah. and Malta have been trying mm -hmm. and successfully tried uh, to avoid uh, letting their public finances uh, derail um, for quite some time and they will continue doing so. Frank, the, the world of politics uh, in these last years, has, has it changed? Well, it certainly has changed. It changes in many ways, it keeps changing. And um, there is... Um, there are phenomena that I, that I, that I look back on with uh, significant distress, notably the, um, the very swift mm. and very drastic degrading of uh, mutual feelings of trust and respect between, between nations in Europe during, mm -hmm. during the crisis, which has taught me that we have not yet reached at the end of our way. It is not self-evident that we, mm. that we uh, act together in respect and solidarity. We might very well fall back into the old reflexes. Um, and, uh, and this is precisely what we'll have to avoid. Frank, um, Luxembourg, like Malta, has a small number of members of the European Party. We have um, six members. Do you think that it is a disadvantage for us to have such a small number when compared to bigger states like Germany and France, who have a much bigger number of members in the European Parliament? This is, uh, this is an arithmetic uh, reality that we cannot escape. Uh, big countries such as yours and mine, uh, with, our, with, our, with, our, with our half million people, uh, cannot really pretend to have as many members of the parliament as Germany does. But there is one good thing. Nobody is going to take any away from us uh, any longer. Yes. Um, since we're now, for instance, negotiating uh, how we're going to fit the Croats in, mm -hmm. we're going to get 12 members when Croatia joins. Uh, somebody will have to lose them since the overall ceiling is set. Malta and Luxembourg are not going to lose any, that's for, that's for sure. Um, of course, six is, six is fewer than 96. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you have six good ones, then, it's mm. um, then you, then you can make a difference just as mm -hmm. well as you can with many more. And um, I have seen situations where it was uh, particularly MPs from smaller countries um, who, were, um, who were outstanding. Mm -hmm. And do you think small countries like us are given the respect that we deserve in, in the ambit of the European Parliament? Or do we still have a, a good voice? Are we still given that importance as bigger countries, again, like Germany, France and other, other member states? Look, we, want, we, might, not, we, want, we might not get the, uh, the positions that others do because that is an, a prearranged game of numbers which, uh, okay. which also has to be operated in this way because if you 
If you let 750 people haggle among themselves for positions, you'll never get anywhere. Um, but if I bar that, I notice that um, um, hardly anyone has ever asked me about my, uh, about my country there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've noticed that uh, provided that you do the job that is required of you, and provided that you're convincing, um, you're respected for that. Frank, from, from the perspective of, of an outsider, let's put it that way, um, are, are you following up what, what's happening in this election campaign over here in Malta? I have been trying to do that for this election campaign as I've done uh, for past election campaigns, yes. And what do you think till now? If you could maybe perhaps compare it to, to other election campaigns that you have followed for our country. Well, it certainly looks, uh, it certainly looks like a campaign which, um, which occurs whenever a, a party has been in government for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and when somebody who competes has a new and seemingly charismatic leader who, uh, 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 who takes on the role of, uh, of challenger. But I noticed that the old reflexes of, uh, uh, of those who are not us in Malta have not gone away. Mm -hmm. mm. One of the, one of the uh, recent, recent economy, the economical development which happens is the financial services. And, and Malta, I mean, these last years has been going to the right track. You think this is a result of what? Of certain stability which we've got over here? It's, um, it's obvious that you don't, well, for the last few decades, you don't have, you don't have a history of political instability and that, and that helps, just like mm. we have been helped uh, by the fact that as a rule there were no government crises and that, uh, and that things came to a normal term and that after elections those who uh, those who had proven that they could uh, uh, keep the wagon on track uh, were confirmed. But it's also a matter of, um, of, 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 of proven competence. And over the years and over the decades, uh, both our countries have, uh, have established themselves as, 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 as financial centers um, with a certain excellence, with a certain expertise, with a certain portfolio of products and of, uh, and of competences, um, which investors look for. Mm -hmm. First, what, <coughs> what, what can be the, the, the worst threats, threats in, in, in Europe, in Europe uh, generally speaking? The absolute worst threat, and we're, and we're witnessing that right now, is that, um, is that we fall prey to the national electoral um, conditionalities of uh, a few selected member states. Mm. If I look mm -hmm. at what, uh, if I look at what uh, happens now at, at European summits, I know that this is entirely conditioned by one single election that's going to take place in 2013, and that's the German Bundestag election, mm. which is still seven months ahead. And I'm afraid that those seven months are going to see uh, a deterioration of European affairs simply because some people in Germany want to, uh, want to keep to their positions. This is not how the continent functions. Mm -hmm. So we mm. see the, the biggest states, the superpowers, we can say, of the European Union, which have an overall effect on, on the rest of, of the member states. Yeah. When compared to us, if, if something um, like this had to happen in our countries, it would definitely not have the same effect um, on no. the rest of Europe. No, it wouldn't. And it's, and, and it's well that it wouldn't. And one of as my, it should be. As, <laughs> it, as it should be. And one of my problems with, uh, with this European electoral landscape is that whenever there is an election in a halfway significant country, and halfway significant countries are all the others. The real significant mm. ones are us. <laughs> uh, whenever there is such an election, the European uh, political dynamics is held hostage by that very election. And since we have something like that every other year or every other month, uh, this, this, this hostage taking uh, occurs far too frequently. And, um, and we also need to be aware that if things crop up like announced referenda in the United mm. Kingdom or whatever, yes. The, the reflex should not be, oh, no, 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 please stay. The reflex has to be if you want to play football, mm -hmm. don't oh, yeah. enter a basketball club. Mm -hmm. And if you want to play football and you enter a basketball club and then you find it strange for decades that there people t take the ball with their hands and throw it into a basket, then you're simply in the wrong club. And if you want to leave, then leave, but leave the others alone. Mm -hmm. And what is happening now again is that a few of the big ones believe that it is their first and foremost duty to keep the others in to the detriment mm -hmm. of the integration project, whereas it is exactly the integration project and the continuation of integration, which is going to keep countries like yours and mine safe uh, from the old power plays from which we suffered for too long. Now, you made a reference to uh, countries like yours, yours and mine, I mean, referring to Luxembourg and Malta. How, 
how much how much uh, worrying it is having a country like Cyprus going through all this all this uh, financial and uh, economic instability it shouldn't it shouldn't normally be uh, overly worrying for the very simple reason that we can objectively easily salvage Cyprus if everything goes wrong and a few things have badly gone wrong in Cyprus uh, also of the Cypriots own doing um, a, a, a communist president with a communist government who have now managed to pile 50 percentage points of uh, mm. additional debt mm. uh, on the country in one single legislature, that is a feat uh, that, you'd, that you'd have to repeat. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do hope that Maltese voters will not give anyone the chance to try that out here as mm. well. Yes. But um, at the same time, if everything goes wrong in Cyprus, Cyprus can be salvaged with a limited, uh, with a limited effort, but it also proves how fragile a small economy is and how, and how, and how important it is to also diversify. We've, we, we, we've suffered that as well. A financial centre, Cyprus is one as well, with the wrong customers, mm -hmm. might very well get into trouble. Mm -hmm. And then you have to back your situation up by something else which the Cypriots simply didn't go looking for. Um, this, is, um, this is something to keep in mind. How do you see the future of Europe? Do you see more <coughs> enlargement? Do you see uh, maybe countries like England who, that would um, perhaps like to opt out now of the EU? What do you foresee? Um, look, a country which joins the European Union, well, the European Economic Community as it were in 1973, mm -hmm. but about which it was evident already in those days that there was political integration going on, and that is then, decades later, horrendously surprised that there is political integration going on, must make up its mind. Mm -hmm. So let them make up their minds. This is not my problem, honestly. And it's not our problem. It's their problem. Either we're going to see the European integration project brought to an end, to a conclusion. That we're, by the way, not going to do if we continue enlarging instead of mm -hmm. deepening. Um, or we'll have a problem. Because the, the, the status quo is not tenable. It is a bit as, uh, as if you're on a bicycle. Huh? If you stop paddling, uh, you fall. And this is exactly the situation that, uh, that, that the European Union is now in. We have to move on. And it is very clear that by taking on additional new members, this is not going to happen. I prefer the project to be brought to a, to a logical conclusion and then take on those who still want to join. Frank, it was indeed a pleasure having you here. We hope you enjoy the rest of your stay here in Malta and we hope you have more opportunities to visit our country. We know that you've been here now for quite a number of times. What do you think about Malta in general? Do you, do you like it? I would have preferred, yeah. uh, northerner that I am, if I fly south in February, that you provide me with a weather that is different <laughs> yes. from mine. But most unfortunately, this time it didn't work, but I'm yeah. confident it will. Maybe you could uh, try in the not too distant months. future. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Indeed, it was Thanks a pleasure. Another reception of our featured, Duarlel, Komun Basen Komplu, Blahar, Mr. Dentana, Talum.